Hi, welcome to Minute with Mickey, a time for us to wonder about the story, The Four Soils. Now, this is a very familiar parable to most of us, and so I don't think it's, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about the parable of the soils itself, because we already have the explanation that Jesus gave. And I love the fact that in the stories of all the parables in the texts, we see that the disciples come back to Jesus and they say, what does it mean? And Jesus explains it. So we really don't have to wrestle too much with what it means. What we do need to look at, is there anything else about in this story that maybe Jesus doesn't explain? Or why are these stories all put together in the way they are? And is there a bigger piece that Jesus is trying to, to get us to learn from this? Or at least Matthew and Mark in the way they put these stories together, these parables together. So starting in Matthew chapter 13 is where we see this, this parable in Mark chapter 4. This parable is also spoken of in Luke chapter 8. But what we have here is a question that comes to my mind. We know that the soils are supposed to represent who we are as people who receive God's word, which is the seed. And all of that's well explained. I think that sometimes we focus ourselves a little bit much on the fact that, oh, I'm good soil because I'm the one that has received God's word and I'm letting it grow in me and, and isn't that great. But there's something about this parable that we, I think we miss and that, that's not explained as clearly and that's this phrase. At the end of the parable, um, there's something that the Lord says in this. Other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. That's what it says in the Matthew passage. And in the Mark passage, uh, it says, Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. And when Jesus explained it, he says, It produced a good crop. The thing that Jesus doesn't explain is what the crop is. What is the crop supposed to look like? So in our story, as John has crafted this, he says, and there was a harvest. But there's nowhere that explains what the harvest is. I think that in our culture, we tend to think about the harvest being how good I turned out. We tend to be very individualistic about this. And yet, that's not necessarily what we see from the other texts that are around this story. So go back into Matthew chapter 13 and take a look at a few things that are not as clear in this story as we've crafted it or as people are familiar with. There's something we tend to try to stay away from and that's another parable that's stuck right in there in between this parable and the idea of the mustard seed. Jesus is trying to explain what the kingdom of God is like. So even the idea of the seed, the soil, the crop, all of these are different metaphors for lots of different things. It isn't always just one thing. And so it, Jesus is trying to explain what the kingdom is like. But I want you to take a look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. And you'll see that now we have what's called the parable of the weeds. Notice that in the parable of the soils, the idea that we always think of, oh, well, when it, it, only the good crop grows because the soil is healthy. But interestingly enough, in the parable of the weeds, bad crop grows just as well. The soil allows for bad crop to grow. And then the metaphor switches and we have well, are we the soil or are we the crop? And if we're just thinking to myself, it's just my personal growth that's all that's important. Wait a minute, maybe the personal growth issue is this idea of being a weed where it's all about me instead of the kingdom of God is like a seed that grows and multiplies. Notice that the mustard seed gets larger and larger and larger than the growth that becomes a plant so that all can come. And Jesus also uses the little story of how yeast is very small, but the woman puts the yeast into three lumps of dough and all of that yeast gets to share in that dough. I'm wondering about the harvest. Is the harvest about my spiritual growth or is the harvest about the perpetuation of the kingdom of God, making sure that it gets out there and that everybody gets to participate in the kingdom of God?
I think maybe sometimes our teachings on this miss this point. We skip right over the parable of the weeds. Jesus does explain the parable of the weeds as well in, in the Matthew passage in chapter 13, verses 36 through 43. So it's about the fact that sometimes there's growth, but this growth is an evil growth, and God is going to destroy that. We don't like to think about that particular parable, but it's there. Also, in Mark chapter 4, verse... 26, there's another little parable of the growing seed, and this is what's really interesting. In verse 28, it says, all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he, the farmer, puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. Notice that it says here that all by itself, the, the farmer doesn't even have to bother with doing anything. The seed just grows in that soil. God is the one who does the work here. It's not about what I'm doing to cultivate my great soil or what I'm doing to grow great things or get more mature or whatever. It's not going to be about that. Maybe it's about the work that God is doing and the harvest. There's no explanation of what the harvest is except that these parables are right there next to the idea of what is the kingdom of God like. What is the kingdom of God like? This is what I was wondering about as I was going through this particular parable again with fresh eyes. And I'm wondering, am I spending my life thinking about how great I am because I want to be the good soil? Or am I stepping back and saying to myself, wait a minute, what's the harvest? Am I contributing to this harvest, which is the kingdom of God going forth? That's what I was wondering. What are you wondering? And what is God saying to you? Have a great week.